I have a question, Dr. Chico. Uh huh. Go ahead. My name is Grace. Uh huh. And, and um, in your book, you you say um, that, that an assessment of the limb is a of the limb quality is very important. But I found very interesting that you said emotions can also affect the natural fluidity of limb. How did you discover that? And what but that's that you... also makes sense. I mean, I palpate it, but when you think about it, the lymph is controlled by the autonomic nervous system. You know, sympathetic, parasympathetic is controlled by the um, uh, hypothalamus and many uh, places in the cranium that are also affected by emotions. So the sympathetic and just sympathetic and parasympathetic system are going to be different if you are in fight or flight, if you are frozen, if you are happy, if you are mad. So this is going to change the tone of your sympathetic system, and this is going to change the contraction of the lymphangion. If the contraction of the lymphangion has been affected, the lymph can be more stagnant or less stagnant, and the quality and composition of lymph may change a little bit. But beside that, I just have this intuition, you know, when I touch and I used to feel people's lymph in the class and tell them what you eat the last 24, 48 hours, or maybe what your state of emotions. It's something that I feel and something that makes sense. You find an explanation on it through the autonomic nervous system. You can explain. Does it make sense? And emotion it can be localized almost in every structure of the body, but some in some structure, it's much easier to read them. It's quite easy to read them in the brain and in some viscera, it's easy to read them. Sometimes inside the glyco, I mean, glycan, it's a little bit more advanced, but in the connective tissue, you carry a lot of emotion there in the fluids for sure. And actually my next class uh, in June um, will be covering a lot of what to do with, with emotion and manual therapy. This class is called NERVE, a neuro emotional release. We're going to use the uh, veins and especially the endocrine glands and feel the cortex and work with emotions. And that's what we're going to do a, a lot in that class. And I, I put that together because I had a lot of very heavy emotional states, people that lost a dear one. They're so traumatized, huge depression with COVID and all kind of emotional, deep emotional grieving. And I realized we can do simple stuff with our hands that are really, really, really deep and really change them. Um, sometimes, you know, they're in deep depression. They don't want the dialogue or they feel bad or they are crying so much. They, they feel bad. So you can just use emotional, um, release the emotion with your hands using the endocrine glands. And when I say endocrine glands, I use all the glands in the body. You know, the heart is a gland. You know, the skin is a gland, secrete vitamin D, the, the fat layer with lectin, the bone is an endocrine gland now with um, an hormone called osteocalcin. So I use all the different expanded view of the of the glands in the body to release this emotion. And so that's basically what I'm going to do in the next class. You see, everybody already asked about emotion now. And it's uh, I think it's important to connect manual therapy with emotion. And we did that for many years with heart center therapy, which is fantastic. And now you're going to use something more manual to do it. And then you can combine both because sometimes you want to go a little bit deeper and use the consciousness, the awareness of the patient, then you make them aware of many things and you make them collaborate and participate and you do heart center therapy.